Well, I'd like to welcome you to the very first lesson of a series of short videos concerning the life of Jesus Christ that we find in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you would like to continue with this series, um, then I would recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the little guy that you see in the icon down in the lower right-hand corner. Well, so much for promotion. Let's get on with this Bible study. As we start our study of the life of Jesus Christ from the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we're going to start where all good stories should start, at the beginning. As we begin our study, you will notice at the top of the slide, there is a time bar showing with an arrow where we are in the particular series of events in this narration. And right now we're going to be at the prelude to the birth of Jesus, things prior to him being born. And we're going to go to the last gospel to start this narration because John takes us back further than Matthew, Mark, or Luke. John starts literally at the beginning. It reminds me very much of the book of Genesis where it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it also says, and God spoke, God said, let there be light. John agrees with this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Notice how John introduces us to Jesus Christ, the Word, the life, the light. Now we're going to look at how Luke begins his story. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, it seemed good to me also, having had a perfect understanding of all things from the very first, that thou mayest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. This is Dr. Luke. Dr. Luke, the educator, the historian, and he is going to give us a very detailed account of the life of Jesus Christ. Matthew, he speaks to a Jewish audience to show that Jesus Christ is the promised one. And he begins with the genealogies found in the Old Testament, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, King David, the son of Abraham, the one whom God made the promises to. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, ja Jacob begot Judas and his brethren. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God, as it is written in the prophets, this is how Mark begins his narration. He's going to show us that Jesus is the fulfillment of all these Old Testament prophecies. And he begins with this fulfillment concerning John the Baptist. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. And then he continues, in the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a certain priest by name Zacharias. And he had a wife of the family of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They were upright in the eyes of God, and they were without children, and they were at that time very old. But they're going to become the parents of John the Baptist, the one who introduces Jesus to the world. Now it came about that in his turn, he was acting as priest before God. The priests in the temple in Israel, in Jerusalem, each had schedules when they would go into the temple. It was his turn. And it was, was the way of the priest. He had to go into the temple to see to the burning of the incense or the perfumes. That was his job. All the people were offering prayers outside at the time of the burning of perfumes. 
Must have looked something like this. And he saw an angel of the Lord in his place on the right side of the altar. And Zacharias was troubled when he saw him, and fear came upon him. But the angel said, Have no fear, Zacharias, for your prayer has come to the ears of God, and your wife Elizabeth will have a son, and his name will be John. Okay, now we're in Matthew chapter 1, and it's the birth announcements. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, or this way. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, or they were engaged, before they came together, before they had been as man and wife, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. He's thinking like, this is a problem. I'm not married to this woman and that's not my child. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now still in birth announcements, notice at the top of your screen, but we go to Luke chapter 1. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Now we are at the top of your screen in the section, The Birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. And she had her first son, and folding him in linen, she put him to rest in a place where the cattle had their food, because there was no room for them in the house, or the King James says, the inn. In the same country there were keepers of sheep in the fields, watching over their flock by night. Jesus was born in a manger, in a barn, in a place of sheep, and cattle and other animals. What a strange thing. But the angel was there. And the angel of the Lord came to them, and the glory of the Lord was shining round about them, and fear came on them. And even wise men, far away in a country to the east, were alerted of this event. There was a star that appeared in the sky, and wise men from the east came to the place of Christ's birth, directed by a star. An ancient prophecy of the Messiah's star was told to them that the time had come for the birth of the one who had been promised since the days of Adam and Eve. The prophecy is like this, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Matthew records it like this. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. 600 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah predicted that the Messiah would be born of a virgin. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which is, being interpreted, God with us. 
500 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Micah foresaw that the Messiah would be born in a small town in Judah called Bethlehem. And you, Bethlehem, Ephratah, the least among the families of Judah, out of you will come to me, who is to be ruler in Israel, whose going out has been proposed from time past, from the eternal days. The time predicted for the birth of the Messiah was also given by Daniel the prophet almost 500 years before Jesus was born. If you remember, Daniel was a prophet who lived in Babylonian captivity. He's the Daniel that we know of the, being in the lion's den. Well, he had some amazing prophecies given to him. And this one was concerning the time when the Messiah would come. Until Messiah the Prince, there will be seven sevens and 62 sevens. The Hebrew word sevens in the King James Version is translated weeks, but it's better understood as seven years rather than seven days or periods of 69 sevens. And at that time, Jesus Christ came to this earth. The Apostle Paul says it like this, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. God was in the details, down to the location, to the timing, and everything. And when Jesus was born, it says that his mother laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. That seems a little strange in that so many of the details had been taken care of except the place where he would be born. For anybody that ever travels, you know that it's best to have a little checklist to remind you to bring passport, your cell phone, your ATM card, your camera, top of the list hotel reservations. It appears that no hotel reservations were made for Mary and Joseph at the inn. And so therefore Jesus had to be born in a barn. Was this an accident or is it possible this is on purpose? When Jesus was born, angels were sent to earth to announce this great event. Another strange thing, they didn't go to the king, they didn't go to the religious leaders, but instead, they went to a group of shepherds. And there were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and this shall be a sign unto you. This is something that the shepherds are going to take notice of. You're going to find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, and he's in the barn, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I want you to notice something. Those shepherds in Bethlehem had a unique job. They didn't take care of just any old sheep. They took care of sheep that were a part of the sacrificial ritual in the temple in Jerusalem. These shepherds were watching over the lambs of God that were going to be sacrificed. Sacrifice is very much a part of the Old Testament religion. It goes all the way back to Cain and Abel, Abraham, and David into the temple. Okay, now we're going to fast forward about 30 years. John the Baptist is a grown man and a prophet in Israel. Jesus Christ is also a grown man and soon to be introduced to the people of Israel as the Messiah. John sees him coming down the road near the Jordan River where he was baptizing 
and he shouts out to his listeners, Behold! Behold, the Lamb of God. He introduced Jesus, not as the Messiah, not as the Savior, not as the King of Israel, but as the Lamb of God, the one who was born in a barn, laid to rest in a manger, whose birth was attended by shepherds. God never intended for Jesus to be born at the inn in Bethlehem. God did not forget reservations at the inn. God made reservations for Joseph, Mary, and the birth of Jesus, but he made the reservations at the barn. God planned for Jesus to be born in a barn among the lambs because Jesus was the Lamb of God slain for the sins of the world. And this is the reason Jesus was born in a barn. Well, I hope that as we come to the end of lesson one, we've kept your attention, given you something to think about, and also given you enough interest that you will continue with these studies by subscribing to our channel and taking additional lessons as they become available. And don't forget, share these with your friends. They might want to hear also.